Monday floss tube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? Today is Monday, March, March the 8th. And my name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel, a uh, channel where I talk about crafts and life in general. So uh, yeah, my hair is curly again. I, I've had a shower <laughs> a few times since uh, since last week and uh, back to back to the old curly headed me with maybe just a little less gray striping um, it is very early on Monday it is 10 to 9 and today's video is going to be a little bit different I um, I have an appointment with Luna uh, Luna needs to get her rabies shot this morning so we have a <laughs> She's she's staring at me. I'm not sure if she knows the word vet. No, she's still walking. Okay, so uh, I've taken her to the vet before, but her, her rabies vaccination appointment is this morning, so we need to go to that. And uh, as many of you already know, uh, this is the this is the beginning of a very very busy time period for me moving uh, the business. <sighs> So for me, over the next few weeks, uh, timing, time for me is going to be quite short. However, I don't want to give up making videos. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is a little bit different. I'm going to record small snippets of video, um, more like a vlog style, and take you along with me little you know, bits and pieces of my day, as well as, you know, interspersed with sitting down and, and having a bit of a chat. Because I really, as much as I love these videos for, you know, my sense of community and all of the amazing people that I've met, these videos are also a record for me of a time period in my life and, you know, I being able to look back on videos where, you know, I look at the screen cap even and I look different and and seeing how I've changed over you know the course of the last three years has been has been kind of cool and it's it's sort of a thing you know I had um, I had I had a bit of a of a conversation conversation isn't the right word for it um, confrontation with a viewer on a an opinion video that I did a few months back and uh, one of the things that she said to me was well you certainly do love the podium and uh, you know there were a lot of other things said however none of that matters but the comment that she intended as I, I'm, I'm sure I'm quite positive she intended it as an insult that I enjoy the podium well yes <laughs> of course I do of course I enjoy the podium I went to school uh, I have a performance degree in flute I, I went to school to learn how to to be better on, on on the podium I love I love doing stuff like this I love sharing my life I love I love talking um, choosing choosing performance uh, in, in a musical field for me was was a was a dream I just I I couldn't wait to do it I couldn't wait to spend my life on stage um, and then the reality of the competitiveness of competing against other flute players who are equally and more much more talented than than I was was um, very difficult and, and not at all what I was expecting and so not only that, you have to, you have to think if you're not the best, if you're not, you know, top of the top or willing to work really, really hard, um, at your practicing and performance, there's, there's, um, it's a difficult way to make enough money to, to pay the bills. And so I started, I started teaching. I never thought I wanted to teach. And <laughs> that turned out to be such an amazing course of action because I discovered a true love of private teaching and um, years of really just an enjoyable career of, of individual one-on-one -on -one teaching children and adults and you know yeah it was it was it's funny how things happen but I do love the podium I'm not gonna lie that I, 
I do. So sharing my life and sharing, chatting with you, meeting new friends, meeting new people. I love doing this, but I don't, I, I no longer, I don't, I can't see that I have enough time to sit and have an actual chat, which is, difficult because this is how I feel that I connect with my community it, with you and uh, and stay in touch so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna try things a little differently I'm gonna turn the camera on a, f a few times throughout the day a little more frequently little snippets and if there are snippets where I'm not talking or I'm just showing you something I'll put a little bit of music in I'll try to watch my volume levels and the music so that it's no, it doesn't go from silence to blasting you if you're listening through earphones um, I'll do my best with those levels when I'm editing I'm gonna try to keep editing to a minimum so it's it's kind of just a you know a little a little glimpse where we're just heading into my day together so I'm going to finish my coffee. I'm going to get dressed because I'm still in my pajamas with my, my favorite gray cardigan over top of my pajamas. I'm going to go and get dressed and get Luna to the vet. So we might stop at Tim Hortons on the way. It's a bit of a drive. Um, and this is just a small coffee to get me started, to get the engine going this morning. So uh, maybe we'll stop at Tim Hortons, have a little, have a little coffee treat. Okay. So I will, uh, I guess I'll see you in a minute. Okay. So I'm using my, my laptop to record for the first time to import it directly into iMovie. So let's see how this works. As you can see, I'm in a different location in my room. Um, yeah, all of this stuff is, <laughs> this is what surrounds me in this really small bedroom where I work here in our house. So um, yeah, you're getting a behind the scenes look at all of the stuff I'm going to have to move in the next, uh, in the upcoming two weeks. I'm, I'm just quickly popping on because uh, we need to do a giveaway today. And I have the cameras in a different place. Cameras up there. So if I'm, if it looks like I'm looking down, well, that's why. Okay. So today's because Monday giveaway, the new one, I haven't pulled a winner yet for the one from last week. I'll do that after. I'll do that later today after I go to the vet. Um, so the new giveaway is this really sweet pattern by Lindsay Lane Designs. It's called Winter Fun Ski, and it's from 2014. That way. There we go. So this is the chart up for grabs today. Where's the camera? This is all backwards for me. And there. You can enter for this chart over on the Facebook group Friday Off the Grid. And uh, I will have a photo up there later today. And you can just leave me a comment if you would like to win this chart. Isn't that cute? I love the Quaker motifs at the bottom there. And those snowflakes are beautiful. That's really, really pretty. So it calls for Weeks Dye Works threads, but there is a DMC conversion right beside it. So Lindsay Lane Designs. Okay, so that's the new chart up for grabs today because it's Monday. All right, I'm dressed. My hair is still wet because, well, that's when it's curly, I just leave it to um, <laughs> air dry. Uh, takes a while, but, you know, I'm not... I'm not going anywhere other than the vet and they don't care if my hair is wet. They're looking at Luna. So I, um, by the end of today's video, my hair will probably be dry, which will be kind of funny for you because it will be a quick time lapse thing. All right. I better go. Hopefully this worked to record it on here. Okay. I'll see you in a minute. What you looking at? Luna. success rabies vaccine done and uh, I didn't have time to stop for coffee on the way here because uh, the truck was out of gas and the person who left the truck out of gas was me so it was my own fault and so now we're going to look for a Tim Hortons before we leave 
I come outside of London. We have a vet clinic that's outside of London in one of the small towns around here. So I'm going to go try and find a Tim Hortons. There's Luna in the back. Happy to be done. It is now quarter to two in the afternoon and uh, I've gotten a little bit of work done and I've just recorded a little quick little video blurb of my modern folk embroidery piece that I've been working on. This is the 2020 2021 Fruits of Plenty Stitch Along. I'm going to use this opportunity to try and figure out how to insert a photo in the video while I'm talking. Instead of having to switch to another screen, I'm hoping that I can figure out right here how to put in a photo of Jacob's design. And that is from www.modernfolkembroidery.com. So I'll just put in that little bit of video here where I show you my whip. So here is the Modern Folk Embroidery Fruits of Plenty 2021 stitch along and I've stuck with the original colors that I chose and I'm really happy that uh, I think they're going to work out beautifully. So yeah, just the top corner there and this is a couple hours of work, fairly distracted while I'm watching television. So um, Hey Sailor and Polar Ice are my two colors, my two Leo and Roxy colors for this sampler. And the linen is an XJU Designs 40 count called Old Linen. And there's my buddy. Let's see if we can get her in focus. No. <laughs> So I've been kind of editing as I go today. These little video clips that I've been taking, I've been just, um, when I have a minute, I just pop them in to the, to the editing software. I'm using iMovie and I just edit them right away. And it's actually fitting into my day really well. So I'm curious to know whether you like this format. Um, because so far today, I'm really enjoying this. Just coming in, popping in for a few minutes, and then, you know, it, it, I think it's gonna, it's not gonna be such a, editing and uploading and all of that malarkey can take quite a lot of time. And so being able to do it in tiny little segments throughout the day has been great. Um, I just wanted to come on because, oh yeah, I figured out how to put the, the photo in photo, you will have just seen that. And I was overly pleased with myself, which was, which was um, quite amusing. We had an open giveaway on the Facebook group, the Friday After Grid Facebook group. This was a giveaway being hosted by Katja um, and Katja H. And she was giving away a kit that she had started. It was a black cat kit, curled up and asleep on um, a couch. And I will, I'll, now I know I can do it. I'll pop in a photo here of that kit. It is a kit from RTO because several people were asking where to find it. Now I know Katja is in, I want to say Germany. It's Germany or the Netherlands. I apologize, Katja. It has completely slipped my memory and I just read your email, you know, a few hours ago. I apologize. So RTO cross stitch kit create for fun. And it does have a DMC logo on it, but I think that's just because there's DMC floss in the kit. So uh, Katja has chosen the winner and the winner is Sheila Bulmer. So congratulations, Sheila. I have left you a message on your comment and if you could email me, please, your mailing address, I will get that information to Katja so that she can mail you your kit and then you can finish that. It really, that's a sweet chart. Oh, one more thing. I had one more open giveaway. The Facebook group, the Friday Off the Grid, because Monday giveaway for last week was this Facebook chart that says, may your life someday be as awesome as you pretend it is on Facebook. And where did the winner for that one go? The winner for the Pickle Barrel Designs Facebook Update Your Status chart was Carolyn Konatster. 
So congratulations, Carolyn. This chart is going to make its way to you. If you could please email me, caroline at evertote.com and send me your information. I will pop it in the mail to you. Yeah, pickle barrel designs. Now it doesn't come with the, <laughs> they've put googly eyes in the Facebook section there. It does not come with the googly eyes, but that's uh, it's kind of a fun little addition there. Okay, so I'm gonna go make another cup of coffee. It is mid-afternoon and I'm going to do a little bit more. I, I've got a little bit more work to do this afternoon. One of the things that uh, came out of Luna's vet visit today is that she needs to have some <sighs> dental surgery. So I know it sounds inexpensive, doesn't it? So I have been, I have spent the afternoon discussing uh, options with John and uh, it, it is causing her her breed, she is an American Bulldog mix, and apparently, we th this is the first Bulldog we have ever owned. We adopted her as an older um, animal from the Humane Society. She was six years old when we got her. We've had her for a couple of years now. Um, and apparently, their temperament is quite stoic when it comes to things that are bothering them. I mean, she had an infected paw and I, I knew about the infected paw because I was trying to resolve the problem. And if you've been here for a while, you'll remember me talking about her poor infected paw. That has been fixed, but it took about a year, multiple tests, multiple, multiple vet visits, different medications, different foods, different everything. And in the end, it was a combination of a couple of different medications that treated it. Um, uh, several different kinds of infection that were in the paw. We went and saw a, a vet dermatologist specialist and she has allergies, a lot of allergies, food allergies, um, uh, environmental allergies, you name it, she's allergic to it. So even though her paw was infected and clearly very, very sore, she never ever really complained much about it. Um, or even frankly favored the paw as much as you would expect for how sore that it looked. So it turns out that she has had an infected tooth and apparently has been eating on one side of her mouth and avoiding the other and because they could tell from tartar buildup and whatnot. And there's quite an infection built up in under one of her molars. Um, and the vet says it's probably quite painful and you'd never know it because she's just, uh, She's pretty happy-go-lucky. So, um, of course, we had to discuss what our options were, and I, of course, booked uh, the appointment. So, the clinic, our, our vet clinic, is booking about three to four weeks uh, out for these types of surgery, surgical procedures. So, she has an appointment at the end of March to go in and have a little bit of dental. They'll do a full cleaning, polishing as well as extract the uh, the tooth that is infected. Well, it, it's, it's not the tooth that's infected, but you know what I mean, where the infection is, because they think that there's probably a crack up in there and it's just gotten infected. So, more than you wanted to know. The other thing is, <laughs> apparently, I'm still feeding her a little too much and um, she has gained a couple of COVID kilograms. <laughs> So back on the reduction, more exercise, which is, which is, which is good for me too. So there we go. We'll get out for more walks and, and, and she, she loves her food and she doesn't get any treats or anything else other than her food. So it is clearly me who is overfeeding her. Um, so anyways, oops, but, uh, the vet just laughed and because she she still looks quite healthy she's just a little pudgier in the midsection than she should be so we match <laughs> all right um i'm going to get back to work i am going to show you a little bit about uh what i'm working on because it has to do with the shop update that i'm doing so the rest of this video is going to be oh wait no that's not true that's not true at all i have one more thing to talk about before i get into the shop update information and that see i wrote myself a sticky note and i stuck it right beside my head where i sit so that i wouldn't forget to do it i had a viewer write 
a question about using silk thread, tips and tricks for using silk floss when stitching with it. So I'm gonna go and get her email and I'm gonna read it um, because pretty much what she'd already figured out to do was exactly what you need to do anyways. I only had one more suggestion and when I wrote back to her, she couldn't quite, it's really hard to describe something sometimes when it's just a lot easier to show it and she didn't really understand what I was saying. So I said that I would show it today on the video. So just let me go and get the email that she wrote and my needle and my floss and I'll show you what I mean. So hang on. Okay, so the email is from Pamela and Pam, Pam from BC. And she's, she writes, I just have a question for you as I know you've worked with silk floss for a while now. I'm doing pandemic in Mississauga silk. Rouge, isn't it gorgeous? And yes, it is. Uh, and want to make sure that the fibers don't fray too much. I use shorter lengths than I no normally do and this seems to help. Should I be doing something else to prolong the beauty of the silks while on the needle? Um, regards, hoping you can help regards Pam from BC. And yeah, there is some... Um, you know, there's a couple of things, there's only two things really that I do. And one of them is exactly like what you said, keeping your, your length of floss shorter, which is exactly what I do. So this is my needle that I have threaded for one of the silks that I'm using in the um, uh, Jeanette Douglas uh, number four, Blooming Bouquet number four. And so it's a, this is a, a new length of floss so I wouldn't say it's any more than 18 inches long in totality. And the only other thing that I do is I make sure that where I have it threaded through the eye of the needle, so let me separate it here. I don't have too much length. Is that focusing? I can't tell. So there's my needle and you can see where the end is. I don't have too much of a tail uh, through the eye of the needle. So I keep that short because you have to remember that from there to the top of your needle and back down again, that little bit of silk floss is seeing double the wear. Not only the, the tail, but the floss that it's rubbing up against, the silk that it's rubbing up against as you pull it through your fabric. So the shorter you can keep that length and of course this is um, this is a single strand if you're using double strand the same thing applies because you've just got four strands of floss when they're doubled over two two plus two um, or single strand you've got two strands of floss that are rubbing against each other floss um, cotton or silk um, has a direction that the fiber goes and there is a way to tell which way is the right way. The right way being when you pull it through the, the fabric that the nap of the fibers are going to lie flat. Or as opposed to if you're going the other way, pulling it through your fibers, all the, they all start to stand up on end, right? There is a right way and a wrong way. Some people, as in the woman who taught me about this, who was Kathy, the owner of my now closed uh, local needle workshop at the time, Thread and I, um, Kathy and I were very good friends. And I remember at a retreat once, it was her who brought up this, this bit of information. Uh, we learned it from her that one direction is the correct way and the other direction is not, it, it'll still work but it will wear the thread just a little bit more because as you pull it through your fabric, those little hairs all stand up instead of gliding through because they all lie down flat. So there was a way that she said you could tell, and here's the thing, here's where I don't follow everything that I, I have learned that I should do because to me, it doesn't make enough of a difference for me to take the time to figure out which way is the right way. So whether that makes me a bad, not traditional, bad, bad form cross stitcher, I'm okay with living with that. Uh, but the, there was, there was a way you could do it. And I have a funny feeling I'm going to get it wrong, but one of the ends. So if you have the two ends of your length of floss, 
and if you touch them at the top like that if you poke them like that one of them will puff out like it's blooming and the other one won't and it's the one that doesn't puff out and bloom that is the top of the thread and that's the end you thread through the needle so that as you pull it through the fabric the nap of the because thread is plied right so the the it's it's spun like like imagine a a a woman or a man uh using a spinning wheel and spinning wool into yarn it's kind of the same thing except thread is just teeny 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 tiny right it's still spun so those little fibers all either stand up if it's going the wrong way or they lie down flat so where you have the thread doubled up on itself one way is the right way and one way is the wrong way and they're constantly going to be rubbing against each other every time you bring that through your fabric so the shorter you can keep that length of your tail through the eye of your needle um, the rest of the length of the silk or cotton frankly for that matter the same goes for for cotton as well the rest of the length will last and and be to the its best um, show ability as as it were as you're working with it so Pam I hope that answered answered your question it was a good one so thank you I appreciate it all right so that's it that's it for regular Monday floss tube I am now going to move the camera so that I can show you um, a little bit of the stuff that I'm working on for Friday's shop update the shop can be found www.evertote.com. I am now the um, exclusive home of Leo and Roxy cotton over dyed by hand floss. And I have some new colors from Carrie. I have them in my hot little hands ready to release on Friday. Um, I've been, we, we, John, John now winds floss. He does and he's very good at it he's really good at it so we've been winding floss like crazy all week um, we have a lot more to still wind card up um, and get ready for Friday so Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will be the next shop update so I'm just gonna move the camera and I'll show you the new colors and the new fabric so here we go ta-da <laughs> we have some new colors and a whole bunch of Canadian bags. So Carrie told me that she was working on a Canadian red and she was also going to be doing a new uh, dye lot of the antique wedding dress and so I had a little peek at what my supplier had for Canadian fabric and I found this really really cool flag fabric um, from uh, Northcott. So as the same as last year, any, any bags with a Canadian theme, $5 from $5 Canadian from every Canadian bag sold from Evertote, uh, $5 is going to be donated to the, uh, to the Native Women's Association of Canada. And so those are the floss colors. This is called 11 points. The Canadian red is called 11 points because there are 11 points on our maple leaf. This is the antique wedding dress that I'm going to put those together as a as a set with um, with some bags. There will also be some bags with no floss if you just want a bag. Um, and I have them in all three, medium wedge, medium flat, and a large flat. And this is what they look like in Hank form before they are wound by us. Here we have, actually, I'll tell you about this one in just a minute, this pairing here, because, you know, we have, we have a Canadian theme. We also have a red, white, and blue theme as well. So there are lots of flags that have red, white, and blue, but uh, a big old hello to my neighbors to the south. And the colors that we have here, this is called Merlot, this is called Storm Cloud, and this is called Royale. And 
So there's a grouping of the Royale. And here is Merlot in Hank form. And oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful. There is some variegation. You can see there. It's going to flip. This is my, um, that's Storm Cloud there. Ready to go. And so there is some variegation in Merlot. And what I have here, this is called Vixen. And Vixen is. Um, this is, a they, they make Vixen in yarn form as well. And so Carrie tried Vixen on cotton and it is stunning. I'm hoping you can tell, look at the difference there. It is much darker, darker sort of wine color, really, really rich burgundy. And the variegation is a lot more intense than with Merlot. Merlot is a little bit more subtle. Vixen is for when you're feeling a bit saucy. Now, this here, this is a beautiful Acru called Mushroom. So I know it looks close to antique wedding dress, but Mushroom is a little bit of a darker Acru with more variegation in it, more color variation in it into the sort of pale, well, I think mushroom's a great name for it actually. And I thought it looked amazing with Vixen. So if this is your red, we've got 11 points. And if a little bit saucier red is more your, a little more wine colored red, maybe you'd like the Vixen with mushroom. gorgeous and that's what's going to be in the shop on Friday so Friday at 10 a.m. I'll have a bunch of different variations you can um, if you if you want one of each of the new ones I'll put in a full I'll put in a few full sets one of each um, I'll put in some bags with floss I'll put in bags without floss I'll put in just the Canadian floss no bag um, in both iterations so the 11 points or the Vixen with the mushroom. I also have enough Vixen to offer Vixen um, as an individual color. So you'll see this as a separate listing if you just want a few skeins, a few cards of Vixen that will be available. And then I'll have a few sets of our red, white, and blue. So Storm Cloud is Look, I'm wearing a red, white, and blue shirt too. It is the palest gray blue. It's more on the gray side. It's so pretty. It really is pretty. And I think it just goes beautifully with those two. All right, so that is it. That's what I'm working on. And it's time to get back to it. So I hope you have a great day, everybody. Hope you have a great week. And I will see you on Friday. I will probably, my video probably won't be up before the shop update. So again, this will be the last time um, I'll have a video out before 10 a.m. on Friday when these things are live in the shop. But you can always find me on Instagram, uh, both places, at Off The Grid Need Alerts and at Evertotes. The at Evertotes is gonna give you a little bit more information on um, you know seeing close-up pictures of what's going in the shop on Friday and that's it okay well happy week happy stitching and I'll see you I'll see you at the end of the week I'll see you on Friday take care everybody happy stitching <laughs>